All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Just got home from Cochrane where we wrapped up our season. Um, had an absolutely incredible season for us riding this year. And uh, I'm really excited to do this video today where I'm gonna focus on doing a full review on this uh, 2023 Skidoo 850 Renegade uh, XRS in the new Gen 5. Um, had an opportunity to put a lot of K on this sled, so I've got 6,500 kilometers on it. Uh, from riding it this year through absolutely all different types of conditions. And I thought, um, you know, it would be great to just spend some time talking a little bit more detail about, you know, some of the things that I, I really enjoyed about the sled. I had some issues with the sled. I'll talk about some of those as well. And some of the, the refinements and improvements that I think Skidoo can make hopefully moving forward uh, on some of the future models. But um, I mean, for the most part, you guys who follow the channel know that Jesse and I absolutely love our Renegade 850s. Um, we're huge fans of the 850 E-Tex. We've been running them for, you know, quite some time, put a lot of kilometers on, on all of the ones that we've had, um, you know, up until now. And really, I think with the Gen 5, some of the things I really loved right out of the gate, the, the new slimmer panels and the design overall, I really love it. Not only does it look great, um, love the new colors, but it actually feels smaller too when you're riding them on the trail. So it kind of feels more like they've, they've, they've shed some weight, which is, uh, which is quite nice. So I loved uh, just kind of the overall look and, and, and design and the slim panels, the silver with the Spartan red. I mean, this thing was a knockout for me when I first saw it last year at the spring show and knew that I had to have one. So um, absolutely love, uh, love the look and feel of it. I'm not going to spend you know, time in this video going through a lot of the features. I think you've seen probably some previous videos where we've talked a lot about that. Um, I thought what I would do is just you know, talk a little bit about you know, some of the things that for me that I've done to it that I think have made a difference. And I've tried a lot of different, um, you know, a lot of different things in terms of accessories and add-ons and, and whatnot. And um, I think those are the things that will hopefully be useful to you guys as you're thinking about um, you know, thinking about the sleds that you're purchasing in the future. But uh, in terms of everything that I've added, you know, the glove box extension with the GPS is a must. That's what we typically uh, are always adding. Um, you know, I added the matte black accents as well, which I think finished off the sled beautifully. So you can see my hand guards um, have all been sort of covered with the matte black and they have LED, uh, the Skidoo LED lights on them. Same thing with the, uh, with the windshield. For me, this was like it. When I had that done, Design-wise, it like finished off the look, looked amazing. You guys have seen hopefully our custom uh, Sled Addicts uh, knee pads uh, that we came out with this year, which I think look awesome. And you know, we always add the rear uh, rad protector and then obviously the tunnel protectors underneath so that we can stud them up with, uh, every year we typically are going with the 125 tracks. Um, I was actually supposed to get this sled in a one and a half inch this year, it didn't happen. There was uh, an error with the order. And so, you know, again, with the 1.25 track, put 96 uh, stud, boy, stud boys in it with the uh, Superlight Pro backers. And that's basically, you know, the majority of the work that we did uh, to the sled. I had these uh, little, you know, the fold out mirrors which go on the side. And then I added another one on the left side for Quebec because these aren't, uh, these aren't good enough to run in Quebec. But uh, as far as, as, far as uh, the laws go there, um, but other than that, that's pretty much what we did to, uh, to this particular machine. Uh, nothing else was changed on it other than some clutching work, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we did add also the new E-Link this year. Um, so they changed up the E-Link, uh, and again, this is kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit of a different, uh, different design compared to what they had for the Gen 4s. And again, um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a little more detail shortly as well. Um, the new headlights this year obviously are awesome. I found that they worked really well at night. Um, the new gauge, beautiful. If you guys follow the channel, you would have seen that we did uh, a really nice uh, kind of overview and in-depth review video on the 10.25 gauge itself. Uh, beautiful gauge. It's come a long way since the, the previous 7.8 display. Um, fantastic gauge, love the functionality. More importantly, I just love the fact that when you glance down the trail, you can actually see the numbers are really big. So you know how fast you're going, you know what your RPM's at, you know what your temperature um, is at for the sled. So um, 
I, I, I honestly love this sled. It's probably, uh, it's probably been a fan favorite of ours for some time now. I really don't have any qualms about it um, whatsoever. I think it handles all types of conditions uh, really well in terms of, of, you know, whatever your riding style is, specifically for the guys who are riding super aggressive, um, you know, trail riders. This is definitely the sled that will do it and do it very well. Um, the Smart Shocks, fantastic. Since I tried them on the mock last year, um, you know, I had to have them on the 850 this year. They work awesome. They work great in all conditions. I don't have a bad thing to say about Smart Shocks. Um, they honestly, I just think they work. You know, you click the button, you have three different simple settings. You're not dealing with, you know, the different, all the 22 or 24 click adjustments that you had on the, uh, the other uh, KYB shocks. I just love the simplicity of, uh, of having that adjustability on the fly. And um, the sled handled really well over all conditions, uh, big bumps, small bumps, stutter bumps. Um, even when you get it onto some nice, you know, flat groomed trail, I'd take it off of, you know, let's say Sport Plus or even Sport and run it in comfort mode. For the most part, I ran this sled in Sport mode. The middle setting seems to be good for everything. Um, and, you know, again, it really, uh, really worked well. <clears throat> the, um, the new uh, handlebar cluster I've also really enjoyed. I think they did a great job um, with the, you know, with the d redesign, I guess, of, the, of this cluster this year. Um, always had access to kind of changing things on the fly on the gauge, which I really loved. I didn't have to, you know, stop or take my hand off the bar, grab the joystick um, like we had on previous models. So I really think that the, um, you know, just the ability to adjust while you're, you're running down the trail um, was, was, was amazing and uh, really didn't have any, any significant issues with that. The, um, and we'll get into the issues. I did have some issues with the gauge and I'll talk about that, uh, that in a little more detail shortly as well. <clears throat> um, you know, they changed the inside uh, foam. They added more foam this year. Um, they said that it made the sled a bit quieter. Um, I didn't really notice it too much. I also blew a belt. And when I did that, I actually had ended up sort of scraping out, you know, all the remnants of that disaster and it pulled some of the foam away. So I didn't really notice too much difference. Um, in terms of, you know, lower decibels, let's say with sound, it, best way to do it obviously is to have a decibel meter and actually measure it. But um, I also didn't really notice too much difference in terms of vibration. Um, you know, they say with that extra motor mount, the fourth motor mount this year that at idle, it didn't vibrate as much. It may have been a little bit less, but the thing is, is once you get on the gas, the vibration goes away anyway. So I didn't really notice too much, um, too much difference there. What I did notice like at the beginning of the season was it was a quick sled. This was probably the fastest one that I've had. Uh, Jesse got really lucky with his 22. His 22 has been a rocket, but uh, you know, this is definitely the quickest one that I've had yet. Um, so it was probably the second fastest sled out of all of our 850s. Um, it worked really well. We did some light clutching mods to it um, at the beginning of the season from my buddy, Jamie. If you saw any of the, the videos where I was up at Poplar hanging out with him for uh, the weekend and just doing some some testing um, and all we did was add just a tad more weight there's those uh, washers that you can buy uh, from skidoo you just add a tad more weight i think it was half a gram to each uh, each of the uh, each of the pins that goes through to hold your your arms in place we added you know half a gram to each of those and that's basically all we did we threw an ultimax belt on it and this thing was uh, was dialed in. It worked really well. Ran it, you know, in between. We were running it on clicker setting three and also clicker setting four. Uh, it seemed to work really well on clicker setting four, and that's kind of where I left it for uh, for most of the season. So that's what we did to it, um, just in terms of, of clutching um, clutching setup. And like I said, for most of my 850s. Um, I really don't go for top speed clutching. I really go for whole shot and corner to corner clutching. Um, kind of like the snow cross sleds, like I want it to rev up to eight grand as fast as possible. Um, some guys will, will clutch them so, you know, you can, you can hit it and it will go 76 or 7,700 and then it will slowly creep up as you get faster and faster. That's really more for top end. I'm clutching this thing because I want it to be fast corner to corner and, uh, you know, this setup that Jamie's put together for me uh, really worked well. We also did try it with a, uh, a red secondary spring that seemed to work awesome. Um, and next year, again, we'll play a little bit more and probably go with a very similar setup um, for, for, uh, for next season. The handling of the sled out of the box, they're pretty good. They're not bad. For your average trail rider, even those four inch 
carbides from Skidoo. They're really not that bad, and the thing handled really well out of the box. Um, but I don't know if you guys can see, but right now I actually have a set of DS2 skis on it. I love these skis. I think they're way better than the Pilot X skis. I think they handle better. They're great for more, um, you know, ver variety of different riding conditions, especially when you get into loose snow. So when you get into loose snow, these have a deeper keel on them. Um, and so I really, really prefer the DS2 skis. And I really only got introduced to those because, well, firstly, Jamie's been running them on his, uh, on his uh, Gen 5 early this year. And he pulled those from a backcountry. And then since I got the backcountry this year, um, the DS2s are the skis that it comes with. These skis are fantastic. They're awesome. They're a little wider, so great for uh, if you get into you know fresh snowfall overnight or you get into some powder riding. Um, they're definitely much better. They float the sled a little bit better than uh, the Pilot X skis, but I actually think they corner better because they've got a deeper keel on them as well. Um, I had a chance to try you know a variety of different setups like I do every year. Um, I really like the Pilot X skis with the quality pieces carbides uh, specifically i used the adventure six inch carbides and the sled railed worked really well little a uh, little dirty you wanted to walk here and there but that setup worked great my favorite setup um, from everything that we've tried has been so far uh, these ds2 skis with a six inch uh, bergstrom triple point carbide hands down works amazing uh, no darting whatsoever perfect um, um, kind of balance of aggressive uh, carving in those corners and uh, I just find that the, the bergs work really well and obviously you guys know that they last a long time. We had one sled, Jesse's sled from last year which went, uh, went 12,000 kilometers on a set of the Bergstrom carbides. Um, I absolutely love them and we did get a chance to kind of play with them uh, this year with some different, uh, different skis. So. That's been a setup, I think, for us that uh, we absolutely love and has worked, uh, has worked really well. Um, what else can I say about the sled? I think I did have some issues with it throughout the year. And again, it doesn't matter what sled you have, Polaris, Skidoo, I don't care what you're riding. If you're gonna put the kind of miles you know, that we typically are putting on every year, you're gonna run into issues. It's, it's gonna happen. Um, so, you know, in terms of the issues that I had, uh, you probably saw uh, early on this year after my first six or 700K with it, I wasn't getting top RPM on the sled. Now that fix could have been a variety of different things. A belt from Ultimax um, obviously raised that RPM, 200 RPMs. Um, to me, that's kind of more of a Band-Aid fix. Uh, it wasn't really the source of what the actual issue was. So there was an, e an ECU update that was issued by Skidoo uh, for this year for the 23s. Uh, thank you to Ben if you're watching the video from, uh, from BRP who reached out to us just to let me know early on. Um, that will do the majority of uh, the fixes where most guys just get, take your sled in, let them plug it in, let them do the, the ECU update and you shouldn't have an issue. And then obviously, you know, because we've done some, played around with the clutching for the sled, we got all those bugs uh, worked out. This sled ran flawless the rest of the year from a clutching perspective and from a performance standpoint. Uh, hit 8,000 RPMs every time I hit it. Sometimes would go 8,100 depending on, the, on how cold it was. Uh, it ran absolutely stellar uh, once, we, uh, once we had that all sorted out earlier, earlier on in the season. Um, I also had a TPS sensor go, and that was super frustrating. So if basically for two days of, uh, you know, one of the weekends I was riding close to Kitchener, the TPS sensor went, every time I would give it full throttle, the sled would basically cut all the power and I go to idle, and check engine light would come on. I would have to pull the key, let the sled um, shut off completely on the gauge, and then I'd have to basically restart it, and away I went. Super frustrating, but big thank you to uh, my dealer and the folks at TVM, at uh, Team Vincent Motorsports. Uh, you know, they plugged, it, they plugged it into BUDS, saw that there was a, a sensor uh, code that was being thrown. Um, you know, we reset the sensor, that didn't work, so then they just replaced the sensor for me. And ever since then, no issues whatsoever. So, uh, you know, something to look for. I think it happened at around, I wanna say around like the 3,500, 4,000 K mark. So something to be aware of uh, for any of you guys running the Gen 5 850. Um, what else? The gauge blanking out. So something I've talked about before in previous videos, I had the issue with the mock. I now have it with this one. When I'm following people and I'm following behind Jesse, let's say in a snow dust, um, this gauge will blank out. 
and then I'll same thing. I'll have to turn the sled off, let it shut down and then restart it in order to get my gauge back. Super frustrating. Um, again, I heard BRP is working on a fix for it. I don't know if it's actually been fixed or resolved. I don't really know what the cause of the, the issue is. All I know is it seems to only happen to me in snow dust. And, um, you know, again, it's super frustrating. You got this big, new, beautiful, fancy gauge. Let's hope they can get that sorted out for next year. Um, one other thing that we did notice also, this engine was cutting out at, uh, at super high speeds and it almost had like a, it would do like a burp or, or like a cutout electrical. Don't know what it is, but it's happened um, for probably the back half of the season and it doesn't happen all the time. It's really intermittent. So Jesse noticed it, you know, when he was riding it and I'd certainly noticed it as well. Our buddy Jeff wrote it for a bit, same thing. Don't know what it is, but every now and then it's rare, but it happens and it will just, it will just kind of blip and then, and then it will catch again at full throttle. So um, again, I don't know what the, you know, what the cause of that could be. It's something to watch out for. I haven't had it happen on any of my other 850s, but um, you know, certainly something to, uh, to be aware of. Could be a number of things, could be electrical, could be fuel related. I mean, there's a million and one things it could be. And it's really hard to diagnose something like that unless it's throwing a code. So, um, you know, not quite sure. Could even be like fuel filter, who knows? Could be a million and one things. So not sure what that, uh, what that is, but certainly was something that was happening, uh, you know, a handful of times throughout the season. Um, the last thing I'll talk about that was also, um, you know, sort of, not, you know, it was sort of disappointing, you know, again, it's brand new sled and yes, I do put the K on, um, but you know, the starter, uh, Bendix on this one needs to be cleaned already. So we did notice sometimes, um, and thank you to one of the, the, the viewers who, who reached out to us earlier this year, we've seen a couple of different starting problems this year with the 850s. So with Jeff and Costa, we thought it was a, a, a solenoid. It ended up being that, that one of their ground wires underneath from the motor to where it connects um, had actually rubbed out and, and was, was shorting out. Um, on my sled, we heard when we, sometimes when we hit the start button, it, you hear just the spinning noise and it's not like anything is engaging. So my understanding is this is a starter Bendix, uh, that actually needs to be cleaned. So it's a bit of a job, but again, it's under warranty. Uh, I already let T TVM know about it. They're going to do this, do the work on it before, uh, before it gets sold. So it's not a huge issue, but again, I've seen it before. I think other guys who have had the 850s. It's, I don't want to say a common thing that comes up, but it certainly happens. So um, that was kind of the only other thing that I had, uh, that I had in terms of, of, you know, of issues with, uh, with this particular sled. Other than that, this thing's been awesome. Um, hands down, it's been my favorite, uh, my favorite, you know, trail version 850 yet. Um, it's been the best Renegade XRS I've had yet out of, you know, the three different models. I had an 18, I had a 21, I had a 22. This one, absolutely worth the extra money um, for the smart shocks and, and the big gauge. Um, I've had some conversations with guys this year, you know, is it really worth it to get the gauge and get all the stuff? Yes, it's worth it. If you're going to spend 20,000 on the sled, spend 23, get the extra stuff with it and just get it loaded. That's my, you know, that's kind of my philosophy. You know, you're already up there spending big bucks on these things. Just buy the best one. I mean, that's kind of my, uh, my philosophy when it comes to, uh, to the machines. Um, other than that, I really, you know, I really enjoyed it. I got to ride this through, like I said, I did touring with it this year. Um, you know, instead we were, yeah, oil was always an issue and a concern for us. So we filled these, uh, these link caddies now, instead of using them for gas, we're using them with oil, really no issues. Uh, you know, from, from that perspective, running it for a three and a half day, four day trip, um, for guys who are saddle bag bagging. Is it the best? Absolutely not. You know, you can definitely get away with, uh, probably have more luck with a 900 R and you're not carrying oil, but, um, you know, for guys like us that absolutely love the eight fifties, I had no other, uh, concerns with the sled. I absolutely love it. I think they've done a stand up job. Uh, the fit and finish on the sled is beautiful. Everything about it. I really, uh, I really love, and I love looking at it. It's to me, it's, it's been one of the best looking sleds, if not the best looking sled I've had yet. Um, and so, you know, that's it. I would say the, um, the one other thing I, you know, I will mention, I didn't talk too much about this really is this new E-Link, um, this new E-Link design that they've come up with. So this is the one with the two magnets in the top, um, for the gen five. 
This connection corroded pretty quickly, so keep an eye on this. And sometimes I wouldn't have a light on on my uh, on my helmet itself. So that was probably the only other issue that I, I I haven't talked much about this year. And again, this you know redesign on the E Link is new, but I did notice some corrosion happening on one of the connections. So that's certainly what's doing it. So make sure you keep an eye on it. You can use you know some light sandpaper or a wire brush or something like that to clean them up. Uh, but they were starting to almost like rust a little bit. Um, I prefer the one that was on the Gen 4, which is the one that's on my BCX over there. It's a better clip. It seems like it's stronger. Uh, not a huge fan of the, the newest uh, version of that. Um, but honestly, other than that, guys, I would say they've done such a stand-up job. These have been excellent trail sleds uh, for anybody who mashes trails like us all season. Um, it's certainly, you know, the go-to, uh, I think, for, for trail riding. It's been, uh, it's been a beautiful sled. I absolutely love it. And hey, it's for sale. Um, you know, we sell our sleds at the end of every season. So uh, anybody who might be interested in a good deal on, uh, you know, on a used, uh, used Gen 5 that's local to us, let us know. And, uh, you know, happy to show it to you. It'll come with some of the extras, obviously, that we put on them. And um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions at all, or you're thinking about, you know, the Gen 5 850 Renegade XRS for next year, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or to Jesse. Uh, we're always happy to, to answer questions and talk to you guys. Um, you know, and uh, again, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video. If you like that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Sled Addicts YouTube channel, where we release content on everything snowmobiling. Also, hit that bell icon so you can be updated every time we release new videos.